Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is my plastic color swatches, or I should say my filament color swatches. And before I say anything else about these, I wanna mention this is actually not my design. This is a guest design this week. Um, these were done by Venegade on Thingiverse. And I will show you their page on Thingiverse and how you can support them later on in the video as well. Uh, but let's get right to taking a look at my color swatches. Now, also, you know, I know we typically do things that are a bit more functional, um, you know, on this channel that have, you know, that there's some engineering behind it and it serves a specific, you know, functional purpose. These are a bit different, um, but they're certainly not a decoration for me. In fact, this week when I went to print something um, that actually I was considering for a, a design for FPF, and we might do it next week, um, I looked at all my color swatches like I do every time when I'm about to print my final version of something that I'm actually gonna use. And I thought, you know what, really this deserves some, some focus. I know a lot of folks are already using color swatches you know, to select what filament they wanna use, but if you're not, consider doing it. Um, it's one thing to look at a small piece of filament. It's a whole other thing to be able to look at a large piece of that material already printed out, particularly ones that have some texture or differences in texture. Uh, like several of these are PLA, but you notice, and I don't know if I can get the light just right, some of them are shiny, some of them are more flat in appearance. Um, some of them are particularly shiny, like this uh, TTY 3D uh, Silk Shiny Copper. Um, some of them have uh, texture or speckles in them, like this Zero 3D uh, white marble. Um, a favorite of probably everybody is the, the Prusament uh, Galaxy Black. has a wonderful texture. Uh, both the bottom and the top uh, re really looks great. Um, and then also uh, for filaments that are flexible. Again, just to kind of as an example, you know, what's the durometer of the material? It's one thing to look at the number. Um, or the specs, that's another thing to actually feel it and see how it behaves at different thicknesses. So let's talk a little bit about that. These color swatches are fairly simple, and I know there's tons of different designs available. I'm not saying this one is the best. This is the one that I liked the most, that I liked for me, uh, both from an aesthetics perspective, an amount of material consumed perspective, time to print, and functionality uh, perspective. Uh, if we take a look, it's probably easiest to see this in the clear filament. Uh, this is it's actually hard to read the name on this one. If I hold it just right, you can see it. This is Sunlu uh, PLA, and this is their transparent. And I, I say on this one, it's most evident because uh, there are four different thicknesses, or technically five different thicknesses on each one of these uh, filament swatches. Um, one, two, three, four, and then five would be the overall thickness of the design um, itself. And this is you can see that this is printed with some solid top, solid top and bottom layers. Uh, so we're actually having really two layers about this thickness, top and bottom, and then, you know, kind of a hollow center. But particularly like, you know, for clear filament, you can see just how clear that is depending on how many layers you print. Same thing for other types of filament, particularly the lighter ones. You can see how much light is going to uh, come through at different thicknesses. In fact, let me grab a light source. Okay, so here's just a rechargeable LED shop light. And if I hold this up uh, to the light, you can see um, at the thinnest, a uh, significant amount of light passes through there. Um, even the next thickness up, uh, barely much passes through. If we go to an even lighter color filament like this guy, we can see quite a bit of light is passing through that. Um, if I get closer to the light, you can see it can actually see it almost kind of looks like we're turning a, a, a brightness dial. Um, and on the, let's see, we can compare PETG uh, to a PLA of similar thickness, similar shade. Um, let's see, let's try a flexible filament. Let's try actually the black. This is the Sane Smart TPU. I really like the Sane Smart flexible filaments. I've had really good luck with them. And you can see that guy actually passes fair amount of light, and you can also see the difference in texture. So TPU, I generally print on the Prusa, uh, the, the textured sheets, and you can actually see that texture uh, coming through uh, where the light's coming through. So, uh, you know, hopefully I've done a good job convincing you that color swatches are worth the time um, if you're not already using them. 
Um, I used to print things in the color I thought I was going to want them in or like for that object, and then oftentimes realized that it just, you know, at a larger scale, it just, it just really didn't work for it. Um, since I've started using color swatches, it's very rare that I reprint anything. And if you're working on designs that have multiple elements and you want to do different colors, it's really easy to see, well, what looks good together? So, like maybe this uh, TNC PLA green with the Prusa Galaxy black, a um, couple different shades of orange here. Uh, I'll often pair like the, uh, the Hatchbox copper with maybe the, uh, the Prusa PLA silver. Uh, it just gives you a good way to, to see kind of how the colors are going to work with each other and how the different textures are going to work with each other on prints that are functional, but also, you know, the aesthetic is important. So let's go take a look at the design for this. Okay, before we dig into any details of the design, I did again want to just give credit where it's due. This original design was from Venegade on Thingiverse. Uh, this is their design, not mine. Um, and uh, I don't know if they're still active on Thingiverse or... Or not. Looks like the last upload was in May of 2019. But I'll tell you what, anytime I come across a design that I've gotten a lot of use out of that saved me some time or that I've just otherwise been impressed with, you know, from a simplicity perspective or just, you know, how well it works, uh, I'll try and throw some love their way. So let's, let's give Venegate a couple bucks. And, you know, it doesn't have to be much. You know, if everyone gave, you know, quite frankly, a dollar, you know, to, to the designer if they downloaded something and it really saved them, a lot of time or, you know, God forbid, save them from having to actually buy a replacement part from the manufacturer, uh, people will probably be a lot more likely to, to share their, their designs. So add a note. All right, let's add a note. Thank you for the color swatch design. Featuring it this week on Functional Print Friday on YouTube. Thanks, Kurt. All right, let's go take a look at the design. Okay, so here's the design for this uh, in SketchUp, and this is where I typically just you know quickly go in and throw in the both the brand of filament on the top, and then I'll put the color down here in the second line. And I think that's the same way the original design was as well. And I extrude these down um, one millimeter. And the different steps in here, um, I print these, by the way, at 0.1 millimeter layer height. I think the original designer was printing them much, uh, much taller. I like, I will take the time and just print most of my designs at 0.1 millimeter. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, um, but not only is the finish so much nicer from an aesthetics perspective, but I find the prints tend to be a lot stronger. The thinner layer of plastic you're putting down, when you put the next layer down, it tends to reheat the layer below it. Um, and they adhere really, really well. So the, the different layers in this print are uh, the, the lowest section of the swatch here is half a millimeter, and then each one steps up an additional uh, half a millimeter. So 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2. And then the height of the entire uh, swatch is 3 millimeters. So not really a whole lot else uh, to look at here. It's a, it's a fairly simple design, but I love that about it. It does exactly what I need. And if you can find yourself uh, one of those uh, little chains, you know what, I'll, I'll look one up on Amazon and link it below, uh, like I use to, to string these together. You can also use a piece of filament um, or a zip tie, but I like those little ball chains uh, with the piece that, that hooks them back uh, onto itself. So thanks for watching, guys. If you want to support me, uh, there's no need to PayPal me anything. All you got to do is just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, um, comment down below. Let me know what design you're using for your filament swatches, or if you weren't using anything before, um, let me know if you're going to start using this. I, I find it really useful to be able to actually see a large piece and kind of touch and, and see the texture of the material that I'm going to do the print in um, before I commit, especially not something larger that's going to use a lot of filament. Uh, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. I publish a new video every Friday. It's usually my own design, but sometimes I'll do guest designs as well. And if you have something you want me to take a look at, there's a contact page on fpfdesigns.com. Anything I talked about today, including the original site uh, or the original page on Thingiverse that this came from, will be linked down in the show more. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch you next week. Mm -hmm.